Right, good afternoon everybody. Thank you very much for joining me and welcome to a solo playthrough of Sky Mines. Uh, this is a new game from Deep Print Games, Pegasus Spiel, designed by Alexander Pfister uh, with Victor Kabilki as, as well. And, and I, co I covered the multiplayer game of this last week and today, as voted on by my Patreon supporters, I'm going to be playing through the solo game. Now, the reason why I'm doing the streams today, I've done Lost Runes of Arnak this morning uh, and I'm doing Sky Mines now, is... I do a lot of solo playthroughs on the channel. Patreon supporters vote on which games they want to see. But today, from 9 o'clock this morning, is a charity event. It's a 24-hour board gaming event, which I'm unfortunately not able to attend in person. So what I'm doing is I'm doing some live streams today to support the charity. Um, if you like this video, obviously make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and everything else. But if you are in a position to be able to support the charity, then the link is on the screen. Uh, and I'm just going to put a thing in there, so this will appear in the chat. There is the link. It's a Just Giving page, um, yeah, to the to the charity that we're running. And the organiser of the event is actually on the phone right now. So if I just put these headphones on and press this little button, good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon, Paul. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Hopefully everybody can hear you. So we were just talking just earlier on that you got you got a little bit of sleep last night. A little bit of sleep, six and a half hours of broken sleep. I did a 24-hour board game marathon. Yeah. Why not? Let's Why do not? So your Absolutely. event started at nine o'clock this morning and is running nine until nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Hours. Yep, absolutely. Four 24 hours. Uh, we are in full swing in the hall. The hall is uh, at about sort of it's a 300 capacity venue, but we're pretty much almost to burst it. Wow. Full of life. Many in place. Uh, I think uh, Twilight Imperium started bang on nine o'clock and it's still running. That'll probably go on until next week. That, that'll probably uh, go on until nine <laughs> o'clock tomorrow morning, I think. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, that's that's going. Plus many other things. There's, I can see a tapestry being played. Uh, yeah. There's Magic the Gathering tournament currently, a Blood Bowl tournament, nice. but also other board games. And it's, it's very busy and uh, loads of people supporting the charity, which is fantastic. Yeah. Now, this isn't the first event that you've run them, is it? No, this is uh, this will be going into our fifth year. Wow! Uh, that we've done it. We started small, and we uh, we, we started about uh, about seventy uh, patrons when we did the first one. But now, yep. uh, I think by the end of this year, we'll probably hit two hundred. Right, nice. Which we're really, really pleased. That was great. Yeah. Now there was a little bit of a, of a pause for a couple of years due to some global pandemic that got in the way. It might have, yes, it might have been yes. Mm. But, but this is the first year that you're back post COVID. Yes, first yeah. year back. We did, we did a virtual marathon the first year of COVID, which we managed to raise two thousand pounds for our charity, nice. which is called the Tops Bristol, uh, which was fantastic. And so far, we've raised just over eleven thousand uh, pounds in the three events that we did in the four years. And I'm ho and hopefully uh, by the end of play today, we're hoping to get to fifteen thousand by the end of which will be amazing if we can. Right, excellent. So just tell us a little bit about the charity then. Yes, the Cots for Tots uh, is part of the Grand Appeal, which is the Wallace and Gromit charity, which most people have heard of. Uh, but this particular part of the charity deal with neonatal intensive care babies. So when uh, when a baby is born in the southwest and, it, and is too poorly, it would normally get transmitted uh, to the, uh, the Michael's Hospital in Bristol. Yep. And right opposite the, the hospital is, is Cots for Tots House. So right. if you have a poorly child that's in there, you can stay in, in Cots for Tots House completely free and you can stay in there as long as you like and some parents end up having to stay in there for months right uh, while their baby in treatment uh, yeah and uh, myself and my good lady wife vicky we we had to to go there ourselves yeah uh, as our son arch our baby boy was born and he had a bit of difficulty he got stuck bless him uh and he was in there and luckily he was uh, one of the quickest babies ever out he was only in for right. 10 days uh, which is great uh, and uh, he came out and he's perfectly healthy now but we wanted to return the favor yeah. by raising money for them uh, and that's when 24 hour board game marathon was born back in yeah. 2018 yeah so it's all in a worthy cause and as you say you've you've raised over the years that you've been running you've raised over ten thousand pounds for it what's your goal for this year so we're on about eleven thousand three hundred in total so if we can raise three thousand seven hundred by the end of play today that would be amazing but even right. if we didn't then you know any amount of money is fantastic and we were already on just over a thousand pounds when we did our last update about an hour ago i'm just yep. gonna do another one shortly yeah okay which is which is great now obviously i can't be there in person so i'm, I'm doing the streams today but as i announced in my latest monthly video log um for those of you watching this who don't know i give every single penny of my advertising revenue to charity 
Um, I don't make any money from YouTube advertising myself. It all goes to charity every month. So um, this afternoon done, I will be transferring a few hundred pounds. I think it's either going to be 250 or 300 pounds uh, from, from the Gaming Rules account over to, over to you. So you Amazing. should see a little bit of a spike this afternoon <laughs> in the money coming Amazing. in. Thank but you I want to do that so, today. So, so we normally do it at the end of the month, which would be tomorrow or the day after um but yeah yes. we're, we're, we're going to do it today so that obviously you get that um you know, while while you're actually going live now but yeah if anybody that, is able so to donate then as i said the just giving page is on it's in the description of the video if you're watching this back afterwards and um that's everything so i will wish you good luck um <laughs> with thank the rest you. of the and day yourself. Enjoy yeah. the rest of the day thank you I, I will crack on with my sky mines playthrough so yeah thank you very much dan and I will speak to you later on. Good to Paul. Thank you so much, Denzel. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Yeah. Cheers, Dan. Bye now. Right. There you go. So that's that done. Let's crack on with Sky Mines. So um, yeah, this is um, as I mentioned. I did a I did a playthrough of this last week, uh, and this is basically a rebranded version of Mombasa, uh, which is an older Alexander Pfister game from 2015. Uh, it's had a retheme, and the base game. Is almost identical to Mombasa. Mombasa did not have a solo mode, so we're going to be seeing the solo mode now. But uh, as well as what you see here, there is a four scenario campaign. There's also another side of the board. There's also some extra variant rules. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff in Sky Mines that wasn't in a, it wasn't in Mombasa. Uh, but today we are just going to be showing you the solo mode. Now in the solo mode. We're going to be playing against Luna. Luna is our AI opponent. And what's interesting is that you don't have to just use low. You, you, you don't. What am I trying to say? You can use Luna with multiple players, right? You don't have to just use Luna with the solo mode. If you're playing a two player game, you could lo use Luna as a third player. And if you're playing a three player game, you could use Luna as a fourth player. Uh, so Luna is basically one extra AI bot that you can use when you're playing one, two, or three player. In fact, if you're playing solo, you have to use Luna. Otherwise, otherwise you'd win. Um, the objective of the game is to score to score more points. There isn't any particular goals or anything like that. We're just we're just trying to score more points. But I did a dry run of this for my Patreon supporters last week. And I played on the standard difficulty level. There are actually eight different difficulty levels. So I love a game with customizable difficulty. In fact, there's nine. So there is level zero and one, which is easy. There's level two, which is standard. And then there's level three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which are the advanced levels. I played on the standard level last week. So, uh, and, I, and I won quite easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the difficulty level and I'm gonna play on advanced level three. Now, what that means is, if we just have a look at the lunar board here, which is one of the player boards flipped over, is I've got these counters on certain spaces based on what it says in the rule book. So because I'm playing on difficulty level three, that's where these tokens go. Um, and if you don't know how to play Sky Mines, I'm not gonna be doing a full tutorial today. I am just gonna be playing through the solo game and I'll explain how the solo mode works. This is not a sponsored playthrough in any way. I did, um, I, the, the video that I did, the multiplayer video that I did for Pegasus, that was sponsored, uh, but this is not sponsored in any way. So this video is purely supported through my Patreon campaign. And as I say, I'm doing the video today in order to help raise money for charity. Okay, so in the solo game, I believe I go first. Luna is always the second player. We've done the setup. I've used a random assignment of boards. We have D1, C2, E2, and A1. And I'm just going to go through those abilities now, just mainly for myself. Um, so we have A1. That's very simple. Uh, you get extra energy when you reach the different areas. D1, I know that one. That allows you to destroy cards and get more money for them. C2... I've not, I don't think I've used this one before. This is where you can buy cards for money and also get helium. And E2 is an interesting one. Oh, I have used this one before. This gives you uh, extra virtual field scientists and are they called gas stations? Where's the robot gone? I think they're called gas stations. Although that seems an unusual name. Let me just have a quick look. I always like to get things by the right terminology. And this is E2. They are called gas collectors. I was almost right. Gas collectors. 
Right, okay, so I think I know what those do. We've done that setup. Uh, I have chosen my starting research tile, which means I've got that there, that there, that there. Um, we get a random starting research tile for Luna, but all you do on that starting research tile is it tells you which of the companies that she's advanced upon. Uh, we've got viewers from South Africa. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining in. Um, yeah, we're ready to go. So round one, and it is my turn. And I need to make sure I get the lunar cars right, because I kept getting them wrong the other day. Um, now, do I have a plan? Because in my test game earlier in the week, I really went for it with the research scientists. And I managed to get this quite far, but I did get my helium to the end. That got me a lot of points. I don't know whether to try and do something slightly different this time. Um, I mean, I could, I could do some research science because I've got the stuff to do it. So maybe I will. What have we got in terms of the research tiles? I should probably shoe mover a bit. Yeah. Okay. They're not looking very favorable. So maybe I will, maybe I'll do a little bit of the old, and you're supposed to play these cards face down, but since it's only me here, um, I'm going to play them face up and we're going to play that and we're going to play that. So there's my initial three cards that I played. Research Scientist, two Carbon and two Titanium. You can choose any cards you want from your hand. Uh, and one of the rules changes between uh, Mombasa and this is that it doesn't matter where you place the cards below your board because uh, the decision of where they go is made at the end of your turn rather than at the start of your turn, which is a change I very much, very much agree with. Right, once I've done my cards, and remember these technically should be face down, we do Luna's cards. Now, Luna's cards are divided into stage one cards and stage two cards. There are 12 stage one cards, which are her deck. These get shuffled. And we have seven stage two cards, which are stronger versions of cards. They will get added um, as the game goes on. Uh, every, every time the deck runs out or every time one of these markers reaches a space with a stage two uh, icon on. So what we're going to do is because only three of her slots are active, we're going to deal three face down cards there. And then what we do is we deal another two cards face up to these slots here. Now, these cards that are placed in these slots determine a couple of things. First of all, this one has two helium on it. So straight away, she gains two helium three. Two helium three. I'll just call it helium. That's easier. Also, we have scientist icons on here. So for this particular round, she has two research scientists. Now, she doesn't use those research scientists, but that basically blocks me from from getting the maximum research scientist bonus also she has three titanium zero carbon zero energy and three minerals that is purely for the purposes of these bonuses which she won't take herself but uh she will prevent me from taking them so right now i for example i have two two, two titanium but she's got three titanium so i can't i can't use the max titanium area then what happens is we're going to basically take it in turns uh, and on each of her turns, we're going to reveal one of these cards and we're going to do what it says on it. But first, it is my turn and I'm going to use... Uh, so I could do max carbon. And you get three bonus markers in the two-player game, which is not something I'm used to. We're only getting two bonus markers. Um, or we could do the research scientist to grab the stuff early. I think we're going to use the research scientist early. So I'm not going to pay to flip a counter over. I'm going to move that to there because I can. I have at least one carbon and one titanium. So I move to there. I gain one lovely coin, which is victory points. And then I get two research points. So I'm going to spend those research points. And what are we going to take? I think... Well, I am quite greedy. So I think... I mean, do I want to take that? If I take that... Yeah. So what I'm saying is that if I take any one of these three, I get the coin. And I, I am quite greedy, so I do like quite like coins. So let's take that one. When I take that one, I get the coin. Okay, so that's, that's one of my research points. And I am going to put it there. And then I'm going to spend a second research point. Um, and actually, it's going to be there. So do I want to switch these round? Hmm. I could switch these round. Yeah, I'm going to switch these round. Because when you put them on here, you can put them in any order. Johan's here. Hi, Johan. Thank you for joining me. So we've got people from... Whereabouts are you? If you're watching this live, whereabouts are you? you we've got people from South Africa, people from Sweden, 
Uh, Chris is in the chat from uh, Scotland. And yeah, where, just let us know where you are. It's always interesting to find where people are from. Because I think Ori's in the chat, Ori's from Israel, Joel's from the US. Yeah, we've got people from all around the world as well, which is excellent. Um, so anyway, I've done that. I've spent my two research points. That is my field scientist done. Belgium. I thought you were Belgium. Right, now we have Luna's first card. So we reveal the card and we basically follow all of the instructions printed on the card. Can we see that? I might need to just move it up a little bit. There we go. Um, and it basically says Luna gains two advancements on each of the two most valuable company tracks. Now, this is interesting that this has come out at the start of the game, because right now the value of all of the companies is zero. <laughs> so the tiebreaker for the most valuable company, I remembered this earlier on today and I've forgotten it now. I want to make sure I get it right. I would recommend turning on your Klingon subtitles. If you're watching this live, you don't need to. But if you're watching this back afterwards, I'd recommend turning on your Klingon subtitles because if I make any mistakes and they are pointed out by people afterwards, I will add Klingon subtitles in. So yeah, turn on your Klingon subtitles if you're not watching this live and any mistakes, I will add some errata. So the most valuable company is the one that has the most visible coin icons in its station. If it's tied, it's the one with the most vacant spaces. If it's still tied, it's the one whose ID comes first in alphabetical order. So we have... A and C. So A and C are the two most valuable companies on Tiebreaker. And Luna is going to gain two steps up with there and two steps up with there. Right. Then Luna discards the latest face up special research plan, there is none, and the A research plan that matches this Luna card's position. So a lot of Luna's cards will tell her to discard or take a random card. Well, it's not a random card, but it's a card based on the position of this card. This card is in position B. So as you can see, we are removing the second A tile. Oh, and I should have replenished. I did forget to replenish. So there's the replenishing. And then basically she takes that one and that's just removed from the game. We don't need that. And then we're going to replenish again. And that's, that's it. Now, when we're resolving her cards as an action card, uh, we, we ignore all of this stuff down the bottom. The stuff down at the bottom is when it's placed above the card. We're just using the stuff um, above the card. That's it. That's her turn. Right. My go. So I still have max carbon if I want to use the max carbon. I do not have max titanium. Um, and I think I am going to use the max carbon unless there was something I desperately needed. I think that was the thing that I really wanted. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say max carbon you've got it you've got to say it is in the rules of the game and i gain two movements up with that company uh tawak industries and that's my go done right luna's second turn on the company track on which luna leads by the biggest margin which is that one she leads by a margin of three as opposed to two she gains two advancements and then she expands that company. OK, now when the company expands, you're looking at the number within the arrows. That's how many she expands. And you're also looking at this value here, which is either max or min. And it's because every region on the board actually has a number. And what they've done with the graphic design, they've done this really nicely that it doesn't interfere with the gameplay because you don't use it unless you're playing solo. Um, but it's a tiny little number inside each of the sectors. So she is advancing twice into the maximum area. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to decide which of these columns she's taking the outpost from. Um, and the column that she takes from, it's called, let me just check what it's called. It's called the main outpost column. And it's the one in which it has the most vacant home spaces, but the one on the final space is still there. None of them. So it takes the one closest to here. So it's going to be that one and that one. This is going to be expanding. Uh, and we're looking for the two highest areas. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So she goes into five. And then the next one will go into here, which is six. So she ignores the cost of the lines. It's just basically advances into the next area and always goes into vacant areas first, uh, unless there are no vacant areas and then she'll start kicking somebody out. So. Yeah, five and then six. And that's it. That's the expansion done. If that said min, she'd be going to one and then two. 
<clears throat> right, my, my third turn. Still got two bonus markers left. Can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. So we're looking at bonus spaces potentially down here. We're also looking at buying some cards. Now there's a nice... I kind of wanted this. This is the one that I want because I need two minerals for my next research scientist. But I don't have... I, I haven't taken the... I'd, I'd need to take the research scientist. What about cards in hand? Okay, which means I need this before I take that. So I'm spending two money to go to that space there. Right, Luna's third card. On the company track on which Luna leads by the biggest margin. Oh, we've, oh we've got similar cards here. It's basically the same. So she moves to here. She gets one Crypt Coin. And she's expanding two minimum. So we know how this works. This is the main outpost column because it is the one with the most empty spaces, but the end is still full. So she's taking those two and we're expanding it into sectors one and two. There you go. That's that's that. Now, what is uh, different is that after her, after all of her cards are face up, what we then do is we then effectively we end her turn. So she doesn't have to wait till her next turn to do that. And what we do is we shuffle these cards and we put them face up onto a discard pile. But then we look at the card on top of the discard pile. If the card on top of the discard pile, the number on the right is larger, then what we do immediately is we discard this card here. If the number on the left was larger, we would have discarded this card. And if both numbers are the same, we wouldn't have discarded any cards. Now, the only reason for doing that is she no longer has the three minerals that she had. So if I had any minerals, I could now use the max minerals, but I don't, so I won't. But that is it. That is her turn done and she is now finished. That card will get discarded at the end of her turn, but it's now me. I can carry on taking whatever actions I want whenever I want to. And I said I needed this one, but I've just realised I can't actually buy that one because I need three to buy that one and I don't have three. So I've totally and utterly messed this up. I need to do that <laughs> so I'll get this next turn, okay? And I still can't do it. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I've completely messed this up. So do we want that? I might have to, I might have to undo that because I've just realised I can't actually buy this because that costs three and you can't combine two different resources together. Okay, so what would I have done instead? Well, I probably would have bought this. It means my research scientist route is 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 actually completely ruined. But let's spend the two carbon and we'll buy this card. That goes into my hand. And then this two titanium, I can't buy anything with this. So I will just use this to advance on some tracks. Now then. What are we going to advance on? I'm going to advance on the yellow track because that gets me one coin, but I'm also now in this position, which means I can now start destroying cards for more money. Three more than the printed value. So I am going to destroy this one titanium, which is valued at one, and I get four money for it. There we go. One, two, three, four. So now I could buy the card if I needed to, but now I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the scientist now. Oh, shocking, shocking, shocking. Um, do we want one research point? I don't think we do. do. I mean, do we want to buy a card? I mean, I could buy a card just. So if I buy it, it's going to cost me one, two, three, four, and then when I destroy it, I'll get five. That's not really worth it, is it? <clears throat> what am I going to do with my last bonus action? Um, maybe we'll go for the extra energy. The next turn. Oh no, I've just worked out. I can... Oh, I'm rubbish at this game. I am going to take the field scientist. I'm going to undo my undo. Right. Because... I'm going to get two minerals and I've got two energy 
and I'm going to get the field research. I'm going to get the research. Set. Right, we're all done. So that is the end of my turn. So that is the end of the first round. So what I now do is I take one of these stacks back to my hand. I then place these above. So I need to work out what I want from this. I think I'm going to put that there. No. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to put that there. Yeah. I was doing all right, Matt, until you joined. And as soon as you joined, I thought I need to I need to undo a move because Matt's joined. Right. We're now going to destroy these cards. And make sure I destroy them and don't accidentally put them in my hand. Replenish the display. And get bonus markers back. So I get this. take my three bonus markers back let's move on to round two so we get another coin here that gets revealed and that gets discarded and yeah i think i think we're round two i don't think there's anything that i've forgotten to do he says no right i'm choosing my cards for round two so we've got the research scientist I need two energy and two minerals. So I'm definitely playing my two energy and my two minerals. The question is, which extra card do I want to play? Now, if I play the extra one mineral, that gives me three. And three suddenly allows me to buy something other than just that card. <laughs> um, I think we might have to do that. Because I am going to need to be buying some more cards. Yeah. I'm going to play that there. Okay, let's do Luna's cards. So, first of all, one, two, three. Luna will turn on these extra slots as normal. And she's got uh, two helium. She's got a research scientist there. Nothing from there, but she's got three titanium, three carbon, and four minerals. Right. Okay, so... My go. Well, I think we need to do the research scientist first. Now, I do currently have the most research scientists. She's got one. I've got one. Jeremy's in the chat. Hi, Jeremy. Thank you for joining in. Did you manage to get a copy of the game? I know you were trying to get one. Solar mode's good. I like I like it. Um, do I want to use the research scientist now, or do I want to use the max bonus space? Hmm. Good question. Uh, what am I going to do with these bonus spaces? Oh yeah, get one at Gen Con. If it's out at Gen Con, I would have thought so. It'd be odd if they didn't have it at Gen Con. Yeah, go and bug Pegasus. Um. I mean, I've got three minerals. She's got four, so I'm not going to get that. I don't have... Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. It's a little weak, but I'm looking at where I'm going to use these bonus markers, and I think I'm going to use that one. She's got one research scientist. I've got one, so I can use the space, and I've got one, which means I get two money. Right, done. Luna's first card. Right, Luna gains the displayed card from the space marked X. So you see this card here? It's actually got a, a layout of the card display and she's basically taking that card so that card she's taken and it just goes there it's not going to do anything for her because it hasn't got any shares on it and afterwards the displayed card with the most valuable share if there is more than one the one from the space with the lowest number so we look here and we're looking for the most valuable share now at the moment the only company that's expanded is Tawak Industries and that is value two so is there a card in the display with a share of Tawak Industries there is so she takes that one and that's it. That is her turn done. Right, back to me. I think I'm going to use my research scientist now. So am I going to pay money to flip a tile over? I am not. I move my upload marker. I'm going to move it to here because I have two energy and a mineral, two energy and two minerals, and I get two money for landing on that space. 
And then I get one research point. And I'm going to spend that one research point on something that gets me the extra money. Uh, let's just take the nice, easy one and have the money without really looking at it. Right, that's my go done. Luna's go. We've got a few more people from the US joining us. Uh, Chuck has joined in and Stephen's here from Puerto Rico. Good morning, Stephen. Thank you for joining in. Right, Luna gains two advancements on the second most valuable company track. So again, we have the most valuable company here. These three are tied, which means it goes for this one because this is letter C, which is earlier in the alphabet. See, I'm good at English. Uh, so she moves one, two to there. Yeah, C, D, E. Then Luna gains each of the displayed cards that match this Luna's card slot. This is slot C. So she's taking that one. Okay, right, my turn. Why do I keep looking at my cards in my hand? <laughs> this is not one of those games, Paul. Um, right, I've got three minerals. That is still not the max minerals. But it might be, because once these cards get discarded, if that card ends up on top, that's going to get discarded, which means I could then do max minerals. So I'm tempted to... Leave. Oh, I've got max energy as well. I just realised. I currently have the most energy. So we could absolutely do the max energy. Let's do it. I mean, it's not great at two, but it's better than a kick in the teeth. As they say. Although, I'm also tempted to move that up. Yeah, no, let's do, let's do max energy. I've got two energy, so I move that up two, and I get a coin. There's the coin's gone. Done. Luna's third turn already. Luna gains two money. Then Luna gains two advancements on the most valuable company track, which is that one. It's, it's the only company with value. So she moves two up on there. And then Luna places a bonus marker onto the bonus space. So this is how she takes bonus markers. Again, we look at the slot. It's slot D. So we look on there. So she's basically placing a bonus marker there. She doesn't get anything for that, but it blocks the space so that I don't get it. And that's that. That's her third turn done. So what we do is we shuffle these cards. We put these face up on the discard pile. The right number is bigger than the left number. So we're discarding that card there, which means I now have the most minerals. Question is, is that the bonus space that I want to use? And I think it is, although that's going to advance me in Minerva Corp. And do I want to do that? I think I do. So I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to go here. Um, and I have three minerals, which is two steps up on this track. Right. Luna's done. It's me. I've still got stuff to do. So I am going to spend my three minerals... And you don't have to spend all of the cards of one type together, unless it's energy. But I am going to spend all three. Now, what am I going to take? Am I going to take another research scientist and try and do more on this track than I normally do? What have I got in my hand? Can I do that next turn? Yes, I can, if I get them back. So that, that, that potentially would work. Yeah, it's not a great tile, but it might just work. Oh, I need to replenish that. How do I get two research points? Hmm. What else can I buy with three? Well, I could buy that. I could buy that. One of the things that I don't do in this game is I don't, I don't buy cards enough. And I do have the option here. of buying more cards, and I'm not sure whether I want to. I think I might... Oh, I, I thought I was going to try something different today, but no, I'm going to spend my three minerals. We are going to buy Randall, the, the research scientist, for three. And it's still my go. I'm now going to use my two energy, and I am going to expand with the yellow company, because that's the company that I'm in. And we're going to expand twice... 
we're going to go into here and we're going to go into here that gets me two credits and one helium that's my first helium i don't think i'm going to do very well on the helium track today but i'm doing all right as far as money goes right that's it that's the end of round two for me so i'm going to take these two cards back then i'm going to put um what's going to be happening up there i'm going to put that there i'm going to put that there and i'm going to put that there okay this card disappears we slide everything down so one of the things which i've um commented on uh about this game is that i feel four players is the best player count for this game because what you essentially have is you have four different companies vying for control of the areas on the moon and with four players you get a huge amount of player interaction with different players having different investments in the different companies and the the play that takes place on the main board i think is best at four players i have played it a few times at three and that was good not quite as good at four one of my things that i was concerned about was the two player mode i'm not sure the two player mode has enough interaction on here i think what you'll end up with is one player or the players basically choosing separate companies and it wouldn't be quite as interesting but remember what i said at the start this lunar module that you can use the lunar booklet um you can add that as a dummy third player and she will basically do things to provide an extra to spice it up a bit the solo mode though is effectively a two-player game but i'm enjoying the solo mode and also remember what i said at the start this is just the base game we're not playing with the the missions or the objectives or whatever and there's a whole campaign as well so yeah there's a lot more to this game than what i'm showing off here right what do we need to do now setting up for round three that needs to go there that needs to go there that needs to go there i've done that i've done that that goes back uh bonus markers bonus markers come back right round three so i'm going to play my research scientist my two titanium and my two carbon which is going to get me to there oh but it's not going to get me to there rats oh no i could do that if i get two research points i can put one of the special research tiles here and then I could move on to that. But how do I get two research points? I have to expand the company, which isn't going to happen. Okay, so slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> I'm going to end up being here this turn. Right, let's do Luna. And you're now going to see what happens when Luna's deck runs out. Because Luna only has two cards left in her, in her deck. So that one goes there. That one goes there. And then whenever Luna's deck runs out, we take her discard pile. We take the top stage two card. Now remember, these cards are more powerful. And all of this gets shuffled in. Matt has got a very good point. Uh, wonders if that the asteroid side of the board is better for new play counts. I've not even looked at the other side of the board yet. In fact, at the end of this stream today, I'm going to flip it over and we're just going to and I'm just going to look through the rules for it, just as a little bonus for you, but also for me, because I've not looked at it yet. So okay third card goes there and then oh there's the first majority card okay well there's a stage two card where was that i think it was there so at least the stage two card has come out there and we can see uh that she's got one research that's an upload movement so one upload movement happens now she's got two research scientists for this turn right okay have i got any tea left no have i got any water left yes it's thirsty work this mining the moon stop looking at the cards in your hand paul right my go i got three bonus markers i don't have the max titanium i don't have the max carbon i don't have the max energy and i don't have the max minerals so forget those bonus spaces they are not going to apply to me but i am going to do this one so i'm going to activate my research scientist first i'm not going to flip a tile over i'm going to move that to there because i can i get one coin and now i've got three research points so i'm gonna take now if i did that next turn that would work 
I need lots of energy. Yeah, that's the other thing as well. There's a lot less expansion in a two-player game than there is in a four-player game. Because um, the board size is exactly the same. Um, you've just got half the amount of energy being used to expand. Um, so, three research points. Hmm. Okay. Can I get four of the same thing next turn? No. Can I get two energy? Yes. Okay, so let's do it. Let's take that one for two. And then I'm going to take that one for one, which comes with a free penny. I'll put it there. Yeah, Boon Lake is another one that I haven't uh, I haven't tried solo yet, but that might be coming soon. Might be coming soon to the channel. There may be, depending on how next week goes, uh, there may be a Patreon-only stream of me learning how to play Boon Lake solo mode. I will let you know um, if I if I get a chance to do that. But I really want to, um, and it's just if I can fit it in next week before I go uh, go on holiday. And if Jeremy is still watching, yes, I said the word holiday. You've been bugging me for the last four years, and it's finally happening. Uh, my first holiday in eight years. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going away for a bit. And for anybody interested, my copy of Frosthaven is going to be put in a uh, uh, an armoured padlocked jail cell a hundred miles away in a secret location. So you can't come round and steal my copy of Frosthaven while I'm away. Just in case you were thinking about it. Um, where are we up to? I've lost track. I got distracted by, by talking about stuff. I'm, I'm doing the research scientist. I've done my three points. Research scientist is done. Luna's first action. Luna gains two helium. One, two. Luna gains the displayed card from the space marked X. It always takes that one. And also B, which is that one. Done. I do like, if you've seen my solo playthroughs before, you'll know that I cover a lot of solo games and I cover a lot of different types of solo games. My personal preference is for ones with a an AI where I can easily follow the instructions on the card. I don't like complex AIs where I have to follow flowcharts or multiple steps like that. So yeah, so this for me, this is a brilliant solo mode. I really like a solo mode where I literally just follow the card, do what it says, and I don't have to work out anything really complicated. The only complex part is understanding which of the columns it will take an outpost from. But once you've got that, it, it's, it makes sense and it's logical. Right, my second turn. Still can't do any of these bonus markers. She's got more than me of everything. Uh, I do have the money so I can start buying stuff from here. This is probably what we want to do. If I'm going to be expanding, this is what we want to do. And I need to buy some stuff. Although I've only got two and two. I can't buy anything. I'm going to have to buy a card with this. Oh, we've got shares. Now, at this point, I need to try and work out which company I think is going to be most valuable by the end of the game. Because I tried this in my last solo game and the company's value changed drastically as the game went on. Um, <clears throat> so I think... I... Oh, yeah. Oh, are we going to do it? Yeah, I think I'm going to buy a card. So it cost me one, and I'm going to buy this card here for three. It goes into my hand. So one, two, three. Done. Luna's second card. Jeremy's saying this may be your favourite Pfista game. Interesting. See, Mombasa, in the year it came out, was my favourite game the year it came out. However, for me, Great Western Trail and Maracaibo then supplanted Mombasa and they became my favorite Fista games but now that I've returned to this one I don't know I I mean I like yet like you probably keep getting asked I keep getting asked oh which is your favorite game how does this compare to the other ones if you enjoy all of them it's very difficult to <laughs> to compare them um I do love Great Western Trail and I do love Maracaibo but this one right now is is ticking all of my boxes right Lunar is getting two money one upload movement Luna places a bonus marker on C, C. She can't. I'm already there. It's a good job I did that early. 
It's a very good job I did that early. Right, my go. <clears throat> we are going to take, I think... Oh, what am I going to play next time? Okay, so that's going to happen. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. I think... Oh, I could do that. I could totally do that. Oh, so many choices. If I take the research scientist, I'm going to have two energy next. No, no, I've got the research scientist next turn. I don't need that. But I've just noticed that. That is even better. How can I take it? I can't. I need two research points this turn. I don't have two research points. Unless we go with double scientist. Hmm. Double scientist or more energy. I think I'm going to go with the more energy. I'm going to spend two. Bonus base is done. Right. Luna's third turn. She gains two money. She gains an upload movement. And she places a bonus marker D there. She really wants to use that space, but she can't. Right, that is her three goes done. Top of the discard pile. The numbers are the same, which means she doesn't discard any of those cards, which means I still don't have the most of anything. Curse you, Luna. Right, my go. I've got one bonus marker left. Um, I'm tempted to do that, but uh, is that really worth it? I think it is, because that gives you an extra one spending power. But next turn, I'm going to be doing research scientist, two energy, and that's it. I'm not going to be doing any mineral, any actual resources next turn. So, do I want to destroy a card? Oh, it's a really good card, but actually, I think we're going to get rid of it. Because I'm going to get five coins for that, because it's value two. Done. Lunar is finished. It is back to me. All I've got is two carbon, followed by two titanium, and I cannot buy any cards. Because these cards are all valued more than two. So it's basically... Am I taking Frosthaven with me on holiday? I am not taking Frosthaven on holiday. That would be hilarious. Turn up with a big heavy suitcase. Everybody thinks I'm, I'm filled with clothes or bottles of wine. And I just get Frosthaven out and say, all right, here we go. We're just going to play this for, for 10 days. <laughs> um, so do we, do we push up that company? I think so. I'm just going to move one, two, and then another two. And that's it. That is my turn done. Round three is over. I'm going to pick up that pile of cards. And then I'm going to put research scientist there. Uh, two carbon there. And two titanium there. Right. End of the round. So I get this. Bonus markers come back. Um, that card disappears. Everything slides down. Four new cards. Um, we go to round four. Discard these two cards. I'm looking at the rule book a lot less than I did on Thursday, which obviously because I, I played it before, but it, it's running a lot smoother than it did. First time I played it. First time I played this, I was I was having to reference the rulebook quite a lot just to get certain terms in my head. But this time it's it seems to be running a lot smoother. So I'm liking this so far. Right. Have I done everything? Have I reset? We haven't done Luna's cards. That's what we haven't done. She's still only on three, not quite on four. One, two, three. Right, let's have a look at these majorities. Right, she's got no titanium, she's got three carbon, she's got three energy, she's got no minerals, no actions, but she does have two research scientists. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have revealed that. I should have chosen mine first. Although we knew what I was playing. I was playing that. 
that, and that. I think that's what I was playing, and I was absolutely going for it with the energy this turn. So yeah, so that's what I was playing. Then we do her cards. So on my go, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say max energy. I have six energy. So I gain four steps up with this. One, two, three, four, which is two coins. And I now have another ability available to me. Which is I can destroy carbon cards for... What? That's insane. That's the value of the card plus eight. Is that a typo? Or is that really plus eight? I thought it was plus three. <laughs> what are we on? Plus eight. Wow. That is insane. Right, okay. Done. Max energy is done. Luna gains three money. Then... Luna gains three advancements on the least valuable company track. Well, both purple and pink are the least valuable. So this is C and that's E, which means this is actually the least valuable. So she goes two up on this track. Uh, and then she expands, sorry, three up on that track. Least valuable company. And then she expands three times. So it's these. Again, if it's all tied here, it's the one closest to the logo, and it's max. So we want space, between spaces 7 and 11, it's 11, then it's 12, then it's 15. Again, these got tiny little numbers on that you can't quite see, but that's where she expands. So pink has suddenly expanded. That's changed things a bit. Um, I'm now going to use my research scientist, and I am going to pay too many to flip over this tile because I don't like it and then I am going to expand to there which turns this on and gets me that two money back I've then got two research points now then what am I going to do with those two research points that is a good question do we want to take the super special tiles Hmm. I'm tempted, but I'm also very greedy. I also like taking that. Am I going to get three carb? Oh, no. How many have I got? Yeah, I've got two research points. Am I going to get three carbon and three of something else next turn? <clears throat> Tricky. Very tricky to do that next turn. But we could potentially do that. Am I going to get any energy next turn? Hmm. Energy next turn might be also tricky. So. Oh. Right. I'm going to take this one. So this is going to cost me two research points. Uh, and it's a C tile. I'm actually going to skip a space. I'm going to put it there. So I, st I still have to put something here before I can move on, but I'm going to put that one there. Uh, right. What's next? I've done that. That's my go done. Luna's go. Luna gains two money, one upload movement. So this is now switched on for her as well. Then she gains uh, a bonus marker on C see there she's taking the field scientist right my go i've got six energy i got two more bonus markers what can i do with those bonus markers i could destroy a carbon for a silly amount of money so let's do it i'm going to use that to destroy this card it is value one so i actually get nine money for destroying that card there you go. That's a crazy amount of money. I never normally have this much money. Luna's third turn. She gains two money. Then she gets two advancements on the most valuable company track. Right, at this point, pink is worth two. Blue is worth two. So what we now do is blue is slightly more valuable because there's four empty spaces. So the first thing to check is the visible coin icons, two and two. The second thing to check is the most empty spaces, four and three. 
So Tabak Industries is the most valuable company. So she gains two advancements on that company. And then she gets a bonus marker. It is D, which is there, which is there. Okay, so that's that done. That is her, that is all of her cards played. So again, we shuffle all of her cards. Put them on top. The left hand number is the biggest, which means that goes now. So if I had to take any more carbon at this point, I could use them as a max something. My go, I've got one bonus marker left. And I'm tempted, I think, to buy a card because I've got so much money. So it's one money to activate the space. Now, what am I going to do next turn? I'm planning to, if I activate the research scientist next turn, I've got a space here. How am I going to get, oh, I need to replace that. Let's see. I need another research point. How do I get another research point? Quick. I don't think I can, except by playing scientists. So maybe I won't take that research scientist next turn. So if I don't take that research scientist next turn and I take this instead, oh, which of these cards do I want? I mean, I could take the cheap carbon and then destroy it for a million pounds. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just spend two money and take this this cheap carbon, which I have every intention of, of destroying. Um, Luna has passed. So it's now my go. And you have to use all of your energy at the same time. So six energy. And we're obviously going to be expanding yellow because that's the company in which I'm, I've got the most shares in and Luna has no shares in yellow. So it's going to be... Uh, where are we going to go? Ah, this is how I can get the research points. I could have done it. Oh, change of plan. Change of plan. Yeah, I think we can do this. Have I got any titanium in hand? I do not. I still think we can do it. So I need to get myself two research points. Well, there's a good space. That costs two to get to. How many have I got? I've got six. So that's two. Um, three. Four. And five, six. Yeah, let's do that. Right. So advancements. One advancement from there. Uh, one advancement from there. And a helium. Uh, one coin. One helium. And then one research point, two research points, which takes me... Uh, which one is it that I want? What am I going to do next turn? That. Which goes there. And then we replenish it. Okay. I think we're all done. Have I missed anything? I don't think I've missed anything. So... We are done. That is the end of round four. I am going to take this stack back, add that to my hand. Then I am going to put, I don't know how many more research I'm going to be able to do. So we're going to put an energy there. Uh, I guess it all depends on what tiles come out. Put a research scientist there and put an energy there. Right. Okay. So that's going back. I don't get any bonus markers. That's going to disappear. Not bonus markers. You know what I mean. Things. Bonus tiles. Didn't get many in the, much in the way of cards. I say, I, I play this game and I don't seem to get much in the way of cards. Because I'm normally busy doing other things. But I know people who buy a lot of cards can do really well. I'm also destroying a lot of cards because of that super special ability there. Right, we're going on to round five. 
I think Luna's going to start getting stronger now because of some some of these things are going to trigger. Right, let's do my cards first because otherwise that's cheating. So we worked out we are going to play a research scientist and we're going to play the two carbon and we're going to play the other two carbon, which means I can move to there. So I'm also going to play two minerals and I, I won't bother with this one energy. I might destroy it. Uh, right, Luna's cards. Ah, Luna's going to reshuffle again. So we get one card there, one card there, one card there. Deck is empty. So we take the discard pile. We add another stage two card in. We'll give them a shuffle. Yeah, what do you think? For those, for those people watching this who didn't know what the solo mode was like, I am interested to see what your opinion is. Because of course I've got my own opinion. I think this is really nice. It's playing quite well. I still maintain what I said, that the interaction on the board is a lot less than it would be in a three or four player game. But is the solo mode working well? I think it is. And I think it's quite nice and it, I think it's running quite smoothly. But yeah, what do you think? Fourth card there. Right, majorities. So she's got two helium, one research scientist there, an upload movement, which adds another stage two card into the deck. Okay. I'm just going to check that, whether it should have been added into the deck or added to the discard pile. I'm going to get it right. Let's have a check. And remember, if you missed the start, I'm playing on advanced level three, which is why those little yellow counters are on the space. Add one face down card from my, to the top of my lunar deck. Oh, it should have gone to the top of the lunar deck. Right, in which case, don't shuffle it in, Paul. Put it on the top. Interesting. Can you do multiple bots? You cannot do multiple bots, which is a shame. I thought that that would be quite cool, that you could play like solo against three bots. Um, now, you, I say you can't. If you were to make copies of this deck and have Luna 1, Luna 2 and Luna 3, then I think you could. But you would need multiple copies of the Luna deck. That would be interesting, actually. If anybody does that, let me know. I'm tempted to try that. You just need... Uh, 19 cards, because there are 12 from stage 1, 7 from stage 2. You just need to print off 19 cards uh, and, yeah, use it yourself. Right, my go, I think. There's a car reversing outside and I've got the window open, so apologies if you can hear a beeping noise. It isn't your batteries running low. Um, right, let's check the situation. I've got four carbon. That is the most carbon. Yes. I don't have the most research scientist though. She's got two. So I could do the max carbon if I want to, but I'm not in any rush to do that. Is there something else I wanted to do first, like my research scientist? I think my research scientist is what I want to do first. So yeah, let's do the research scientist first. I'm not going to pay to flip anything over. I am going to move to there and then to there because I have four of the same resource. And my special ability is I can remove two, two of these lovely things gone from the game. There you go. So that's that's increased the value of the yellow company, which I seem to be all eggs in one basket at the moment with that. Then I get three research points. Nom, nom, nom. Well, what am I going to play next turn? Oh, I'm short of cards now. See, at this point, do I just say I'm not going to do any more research? I might just forget that now and just start taking money. Although that one, that one is one and gets me the money. So I might as well. T oh, I can't be there. But then I think I might just quit. Although there are those tiles at the top. How many have I got? Three. Yeah, no, I'm going to take those tiles at the top because they're they're amazing. So I'm going to take that special research tile and it goes on there. That cost me my other two research points. Okay. Luna's first turn of four. On the company track in which Luna leads by the biggest margin, which is up there, 
she gains two more one two uh, and then she expands that company twice so this is the main outpost column followed by this one two into the maximum area so what have we got numbers wise 10 she can get to 10 that is the highest number it's either seven eight three four or ten so she goes into ten next highest number is i believe eight remember she's only going to vacant spaces so she goes to there done right my turn i have the most carbon So I should probably, if I'm going to do it, now's the time to do it. That gets me three up with this company. That at least gets me a share because that company is going to be worth something at the end. Okay, next. On the company trike on which Luna leads by the biggest margin. Oh, okay. literally, it's these two cards again. So she gets another two, which gets her two money. Um, and she expands two, which is from here. And this time it's minimum. So it's basically spaces three and four. There you go. Easy. My go. I have two bonus markers left and I need to be buying cards because I'm not going to have enough cards to play next turn. If I don't if I don't pick up any cards, yeah, I'm not going to have enough. Am I bothered about my um, Helium 3? Two turns left? Not sure I am. Don't want to treasure a card. Not interested in first player. Do I want any of these? Do I want any of these? And they are nice. But we need to buy cards. So I'm going here. Spending one money. Buying a card. There's so much choice now. And some of these cards have got shares on. Like this one for three energy. Which is nom 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 nice. That would get my helium up. I mean, three energy on one card is nice, but that's going to cost me five. Totes expensive. Um, what shall we buy? This isn't very good at the moment, although that would be good with that one. I've not really moved up these company tracks that much, have I? Apart from that one, which allows me to buy carbon. Hmm. Need to replenish that pile. <sighs> trying to think what I'm going to do next turn. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know which of these cards to buy. I kind of don't want another research scientist at this point. So I think it might be three money to buy some titanium. It's either titanium or minerals. What have I got in hand? One energy. Well, that's rubbish. Yeah, I'm just going to take this. Done. Luna's third turn. Uh, are the player boards dual layered? Nope. Nope. The player boards are not dual layered. And Peter is right. This is a final copy of the game. This is not a prototype. It's not a pre-production copy. This is a, an actual final copy of the game that they they rushed me as soon as they got one available. Um, so Luna gains two on the second most valuable company track. Okay, we need to start adding up now. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's between those two. They've both got exactly the same number of empty spaces. So it's yellow because that's letter A. So that is the most valuable. And then this one. So Luna gains two spaces up on there. And then she places a bonus marker. It is slot D. Uh, no, it's a card. She takes the card from there. Oh, that's got a share on it. Yeah. Okay, right, my go. I've got four carbon, two minerals, one bonus marker left. I 
I can't buy another card. But I could get an additional two energy for next turn. So let's do it. Let's go into here, spend two money. Okay, Luna's fourth and final card is Luna gains the displayed card from the space mark X. Afterwards, the displayed card with the most valuable share. So we're looking at the most valuable share. So that's worth six. If there is a blue share, there is. But there is a yellow share as well. Um, so yeah, the most valuable share. Let me just double check this. It's a really good rule book, really well written. Victor Kabilki does excellent, excellent rule books that are very, very clear. Uh, and this is no exception. So if you're worried about learning the game from the rule book, it is one of the best rule books that I've read recently. But then again, all of Victor's rule books are the same. Whenever I gain a card with the most valuable share, it means give me the card that shows an additional share of the company, which among those displayed belongs to the most valuable company. So again, we need to work out these two have got exactly the same number of coins, exactly the same number of empty spaces. That is slightly more valuable on tie break. So Luna's going to take that one. Done. And then that's her fourth card. So off we go. We do the shuffling thing. There are two turns left after this one. This is round five. There are seven rounds in total. Okay, the top card is the biggest number on the right. That disappears, which means I can now do max minerals if I had any bonus markers left, which I don't. Okay, so what's next? It's me to do my stuff. I could do with going on here. <laughs> that would be nice. Can I get there? I could. I could get to there, but then I don't have any bonus markers. But that would be good for next time. But there's no point advancing in purple because Minerva Corp is a dormant corporation. Just like in two of the other games I've played recently, purple just doesn't seem to expand. Um, yeah, so we've basically got four carbon and two minerals. Now, the two minerals is easy because there's nothing worth two here. So we're going to use the two minerals to move up on some tracks. And it seems wise to move up on here because yellow is doing quite well and I'm going to expand yellow again. But then we have four carbon. Now, am I going to buy a card with the four carbon? I think I am. I think I'm going to spend three of it on this mineral. Or do we buy the field scientist? That field scientist could actually get me quite a lot of helium. So I might actually buy this field scientist. I mean, is it is it too late to do much of the helium? It probably is, to be honest. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'll screw it. Yeah, let's have a change of plan. Let's not really bother much with the helium in this game. Let's take that one. So that cost me three. One more will be on there. And that's it. Used all my bonus markers, used all of my cards. That is the end of my turn. Right, I am going to take back into my hand. Do I want to take back a research scientist? No, I don't. I'm going to pick up this pile. Okay, and then that research scientist is going there. And then that goes there, that goes there. And that goes there. Okay, done. Discard that. Move all these cards along. Replenish. And we're about to go into round six. I, I feel it's going quite well. But who knows? Who knows indeed? Round six. Nobody took any... Oh, no, I did. I took this one. I forgot I took that one. Oh, well. I got some more energy that I forgot about. Okay, so I'm playing four cards. Here we go. Gert says, I'm not winning this one. I think I am winning this one. I, I feel this is going quite well. Um, we will see. We will see. Uh, Alexander's popped in the chat. Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, while you're here, Alexander, I have I have a question for you, if you wouldn't mind answering it. Um, the base game of Sky Mines seems almost identical to Mombasa. So I was just wondering, because Victor's name is on the front cover of the box, 
is it Victor that has done all of the extra stuff? Like the other side of the board, the solo mode. I'm just curious as to what role Victor had in the new version, just because the base game was very similar to Mombasa. Um, but yeah, as you can see, really, really enjoying it. And it, it, I do like the solo mode. I like uh, The solo mode is good for this. So four cards, what we're going to play. So we don't have any research scientists in hand, but we do have lots of titanium, lots of minerals. And this is the last time I'm going to play some of these cards because this is round six. Um, if we play the two energy, then combined with that is four. And then we got that. That's five titanium. That's loads of titanium. That's going to move me up on the pink company, which is actually worth something. Oh, we got spam in here again. I will uh, I rem remove this. Apologies for this. I mean, it's nothing I can do. Um, but there's lots of uh, lots of YouTube spam bots at the moment. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of them uh, as much as possible. Um, and if people just want to put things in the chat to get to get that off screen, I will uh, I will. Yeah. There's nothing I can do. As soon, as soon as they come up, we get rid of it. But then, of course, it's um, yeah, it, it's showing in the chat. Um, yeah, they're the cards I'm going to play. Right, let's do Luna's cards. And then let's just have a short break while I just tell you about the, uh, the charity stuff. That's going to go there. No movements on that. Two helium. One, two. And it's got one research scientist. Okay, so quick, quick, just interruption, just before we start round six. I'm doing this live stream today. Uh, obviously, my Patreon supporters uh, fund the channel and they help me produce content like this. This is not a sponsored video in any way. So thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for um, for supporting the channel. And it's also Patreon supporters that voted in the last week on what games they wanted to see me play today. So although I did want to play this game myself, it was actually Patreon supporters uh, that, that voted on it. So yeah, big thank you to you. And if you are able to support the channel uh, and help keep the channel going, I do rely on the Patreon support to keep the channel going. It's patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. But the other reason that I'm doing the stream today is there is a 24 hour charity event going on right now in person, which I wasn't able to attend myself. So I'm doing a couple of solo games today. I did one earlier on this morning, Lost Ruins of Arnak, and I'm doing this this afternoon uh, in order to help raise money for the charity. So if you are in a position to be able to support the charity, there is a link uh, in the chat right now, which is the Just Giving page uh, for Tots for Cots, Cots for Tots, yeah. Um, anyway, that's going on right now, if you are able to do that. And, as some of you know, I give every single penny of my advertising revenue every month to charity, so all of my advertising revenue for this last month is actually being donated to the, to the charity that I'm supporting. Uh, I don't get as many views as a lot of the bigger channels, uh, but still I do manage to raise about £250-£300 a month in advertising revenue and as i said this month all of that is going towards the charity um and the only reason that i'm able to do that financially you might think wait a minute that's crazy why is paul giving away 300 pounds a month to charity is because of the support of the patreon the patreon support is enough that i'm able to continue to give all of my advertising revenue to charity uh, and it's just one of those feel good things that i like to do um and i'm able to do it thanks to your support so yeah big thank you to everybody for for your support right round six off we go. Let's have a drink. What am I going to do first? Well, I have... I have joint most minerals, and I have the most titanium. So there's lots of spaces up there that are going to be good for me. I don't have the maximum... Oh, I do have the maximum energy as well. I've got all of it. I've got the most energy, I've got the most minerals, I've got the most titanium. So that's potentially where these three bonus markers are going. But I've only got three bonus markers. I want more. I'm being greedy. Um, and I don't have any research points, but I could get the research points by expanding with a company to get a couple of research points. Because I'd like to put something in here. Now I've got two research scientists here. It could be that one. It could be you. Or it could be you. Or it could be you. No, it's going to be that one. 
So I think I might want to expand early, which means I probably want to do the max energy first. So we're going to, we're going to say maximum energy. I have four energy, uh, which means I get three steps up on this track. One, two, three, and I get one coin. Right. Luna's first turn. So answer for Alexander. Victor was also the editor of Mombasa. Yes, he was. I think uh, the rule book for Mombasa, which I think is absolutely fantastic, that is the first time I came across Victor's name. Um, and he invested a lot of time and energy. So you offered co-designer for Mombasa back then. All oh, right. Interesting. OK, so he helped out with Mombasa. Brilliant. OK, well, thank you very much for that. Uh, and yeah, it's good to have his name on there because Victor's one of those people in the industry that's just really, really good. Uh, and his rule books are fantastic people quite often ask me uh who are my favorite rulebook writers and editors um jason holt is one of them who does all of the game rule books for check games edition uh but victor is is another one as well victor's rule books are absolutely fantastic i think i'm going to start a victor kabilki fan club if anybody wants to join uh then let me know where are we up to we're doing Luna's first card, aren't we? Yes, Luna's first card. Okay, so this is one of the stage two cards. Wow, this is a big one. So Luna's going to get two helium, which is actually going to get her an extra stage two card. And two uploads. And then Luna gains the display card, so it's B. So she's going to take that one. Afterwards, the displayed card with the most valuable share. Right, okay, so again, we're looking at the most valuable company, which is this one. Is there a blue share in there? No. This is the next most valuable company. Is there a yellow share? Yes, there is. Okay, that's a powerful card. That is a very, very powerful card. Okay, my go. So we've done the max energy. I'm now going to spend four energy and we are going to expand yellow. Um, and we want, what is it we want? We want two research points. So I might just end up spending three energy. Oh no, one, two. Yeah, that's three. Three, four. I got four energy, so yeah, one, two, three, four, awesome. Three research points and a money. There's the money. The three research points is going to be, right, Paul, think. You already knew which one it was going to be. Don't mess it up. Oh, I've forgotten. I got distracted by talking about Victor. Um... What's it going to be? It's one that's going to go in there. So it can't be an A. It could be a special one again. Oh, it totally could be a special one. I mean, I have the money. I'm going to need 10 money to bypass that. So I need to make sure I've got 10 money and I'm going to need five money for that. I've still got the money. I can still do it. It's a huge amount of points. It's a massive amount of points, but let's do it. So that cost me two research points, and then that cost me an extra one. Okay, replenish that with that. There we go. Done. Right. Next. Luna's second turn. Luna gains two money. Uh, two on the most valuable company track. Now, the most valuable company track is now yellow. So she's going two up on here. Uh, and then she takes card C, which is, sorry, no, bonus marker. Bonus marker on there. Done. My go. I've still got two bonus markers and I still have the most titanium, which is five, which would be three steps up on here. Hmm. Is that worth a thing? I mean, it might not be even worth it. I've got to be very careful with the use of these. And I could just buy another card and then burn it. I could buy like a four carbon card and burn it, but I'm not sure that's worth it. Um, so next turn, I'm going to be doing double research scientist with a carbon 
and I'm going to be moving to and probably flipping that over and moving to here. So next turn, I need two energy and one carbon. I have. Yeah, so I'm going to have to do that. That's going to be. And then next turn is planned. Luna's third card. It's another stage two card. Wow, look at that. Luna gains three money and four helium. Have I done her helium correctly? I'm not sure I have. If anybody's been watching, have I been doing this correctly? One, two, three, four. Wow. And then bonus marker on D, which is there. Right, my go. I've got one bonus marker left. It could be Max Minerals. Max Minerals is actually probably better. Because the value of Tarak Industries is a lot more than the value of Astrogo. So I think we're going to say Max Minerals. It's only two, but it's a free move. Luna's fourth card is two money. She's got a lot of money. <laughs> this big pile of money here. Uh, and an upload movement. And Luna places a bonus marker. This is slot E. She can't. I'm already there. Right, that's her done. Let's take her four cards. This doesn't actually matter because I've already got the maximum. But I'll do it anyway. I'll go through the process. Numbers are the same, so nothing changes. Right. We've got three minerals and we've got five titanium. I can use those to buy some really good stuff. Or move up on lots of tracks. So... That's the question. What is it that we're actually going to be buying? Uh, yeah. Gosh. Oh, I just noticed that. Actually, I'm going to get quite far on this research track. Um, okay, let's do the three minerals first. Do we want to buy a card? Two cards in hand. They're rubbish. I'm going to get three cards back. So I've got three minerals to spend. Or I could move up on tracks. There's no point moving up on there because it's not worth anything. Um, I've forgotten what the rule is about if you move up on a track when you're already at the top. Do you get two money for it? Uh, I know that the solo game, I know that um, Luna does that. But I can't remember if a player... If they're moving up on one of the tracks, if they're at the top, if you get two coins for every space beyond it. If anybody knows, let me know. I meant to look it up this morning and then I got distracted by drinking a cup of tea. Um, company tracks. Expanding on the company tracks. Here we go. Um... 21 to 23. Nope. Oh, no, that's, that's the money barriers. Two types of bonuses. Yeah, if anybody knows, let me know. Ah, if you reach the last space of a track, your marker remains there for the rest of the game. Okay, so there is no... Uh, benefit for advancing on a track when you are already at the end. The solo player does that, uh, the lunar player does that, but not, not a human player. Um, so where are we? I've spent my three minerals and I need to decide what I'm doing with those three minerals. I'll tell you what, I'm going to move, I'm not going to buy a card, I'm going to move two spaces up on that track, which gets me a coin, but also gets Luna a coin. Because Luna already got there before me. But I've now got one additional energy, as long as I'm producing energy. Oh, I should have done that first. That would have given me one more energy, which I probably couldn't have spent. Never mind. Um, then I'm going to spend my five titanium. Now, how are we going to spend the five titanium? Do we want to buy a card? We're going to get two energy next turn. Um, 
five. That's a lot. So I could buy this for three. That's an awesome card. So that's three. And I've got two left. One of which is going to be to there, costing me ten money. And the other one... Um, yeah, let's move up. Let's try and get a third share in blue. Right, I'm all done. That is round six finished. So I'm going to take these back. And now where these cards go doesn't actually matter because I'm not going to get these cards back um, at all. I got my cards in my hand. Right, off we go. Final round of the game. How do you think I'm doing? Gert earlier on didn't think that I was doing very well. Whereas my feeling was... I, I don't think I'm doing as well as I did the other, get, the other day. The other day... I got my helium to the max and I got my research marker here. I got a billion points. Um, I've not got that today. I've definitely not done as well today as I did in the learning game. I get, I get this back. And we go into round seven. Final round. It's also a good length for this game. Seven rounds is the right length. All right, off we go then. So, I'm playing four cards. Now, in order for me to get to... Oh, I thought I needed double research scientist. I don't. I only need one. Oh, that changes things. But I need two energy, and I need a carbon or a titanium. Well, there's the titanium. Definitely playing that. That is going to stay in my hand, because I'm going to blow it up for ten money. So, yeah, I don't need the other research scientist, although it's probably the best thing to do in terms of points. Yeah, let's do that. Right, I've played my cards. So, Luna, for the final round of the game. One card, two cards, three cards, four cards. Her deck is empty, so we take the discard pile. We add in a stage two card. We give it all a shuffle. And we have her final majority cards. No special bonus on there. No special bonus on there. And she's only got one research scientist. And I have two research scientists for this turn. So, off we go then. Do we want to use the max research scientists? It will get me two coins and a research point, which is effectively another coin. I don't know what else are we going to do with our bonus markers. Do I have the most energy? I've joined most energy. I've got four, so that's fine. But that I can't move up on here anymore. So that's... We don't need to do that. Um, we're trying to get more shares in blue. Which I can do. I've got four titanium here. Oh, we got shares. We can buy shares. Oh. So many choices. But I think we're going to use... The... Uh, There's no point taking these in the last round of the game. I might take that if I've got a carbon in hand, which I do. So I definitely want to do that because that's a mass, That's like a 10-point swing. So I need to save one for that. Uh, the max carbon will give me three steps up on here uh, and remove a, a, a station. So that's actually quite good. So yeah, one bonus marker for that, one bonus marker for that. And yeah, let's let's do max scientists. So I have one plus another one. So I get two, two money plus a research point. And that research point is going to be that one, which goes there. And I take that money and then that gets replaced by that one. Okay. That's me done. Luna's first card. On each of the two company tracks on which Luna leads by the biggest margin, she gets two advancements. So she's ahead 
on this one and that one. Then she expands each of these companies, starting with the least valuable. So this is the least valuable. It's this one and this one, wasn't it? Yeah. So she advances two and it's minimum. So that is seven. But now I don't think she can get anywhere. Aha, right. So I'm glad we've seen this. And it, the last time I played the solo game, this only happened in the last round of the game. Pink has got one more expansion to do and Pink cannot expand into an adjacent vacant area. So what happens is we are going to look at which one she's going to displace and it's the one that she's got the least in. So she's got the least in... Let me just double check this. If none of the reachable sectors is vacant, choose from the sector with the lowest or highest. This is lowest because it's minimum sector number that contains an outpost of the reachable company on whose track I'm farthest behind. She's farthest behind on yellow. So she wants to kick out yellow. So it's the lowest numbered space. And it's this one, isn't it? Yeah, it's the lowest numbered space of yellow that can be reached, which I think is this one, 13. And then this goes back there. Right, okay, I think that's right. And then she's expanding in blue. And again, it's minimum. So we're taking these two uh, and there is nowhere vacant. So she's gonna kick out yellow. Yeah, so it's here. Followed by, oh, and now we do have a vacant space. So now it goes into the vacant space. So it just kicks out that one and that one goes back there. Okay, yep, I think that's right. Yeah, nobody likes purple. Pur Purple's decided not to take a part in this game. Um, but that's it. That's a big stage two card. So lots of expansion there. That has changed a lot. My go. Um, we've done our max scientist, so we're now going to use this research scientist. Do I want to flip over a tile? Yes, I do. I want to pay two money to flip over this one. I'm then going to wait, move. So five money to there, six money to there. I can do that, but I'm not going to land there. I'm going to go there. So I have to spend 11 money. Two, three, four, five, six, five. But that gets me an extra 22 points at the end of the game. And then I've got three research points. And I think those three research points at this stage in the game. Uh, oof. Well, I can do that. There's two. And there's one. Wow. Okay. I'm going to get him a lot more points than I thought. Done. Luna's second card. Luna gains two advancements on each of the two most valuable company tracks. So at this point, we're talking blue and yellow. So she goes there, which gets her one money, but also me one money. And there. Uh, Luna discards the latest face-up special research plan. So the number seven one is gone. Uh, and the A research plan that matches slot. So C, so it's that one. That goes, and then replenish. Done. Right, my go. So I think I'm going to use my other research scientist now. So am I going to flip over a tile? No. I'm going to move my upload marker to here, because I have three titanium. I spend two to get past there, but then one to get it back. And then I get two research points. And those two research points are just going to be money. At this point, Luna's third card. That should be a deck. I've put it in the wrong place. I'm always doing that. Luna gains two money, one upload. And she places a bonus marker. It is slot D. There. Not that I was going to take that. Right. I have three energy plus my bonus one. I also have four titanium. <clears throat> we also have two of the bonus markers. So, is Luna going to be expanding again? She might be. I'm not sure whether she is or not. 
but I probably want to expand later just in case yeah oh more more spam in there keep trying to get rid of it and it's a different user each time so I don't, I don't know what's going on with YouTube it goes through these phases um, slightly distracted what am I doing I can't remember I haven't taken my turn yet that was it it's either spending energy or spending to tame or using a bonus marker should I just use a bonus marker and be done with it I'll go there and I'll destroy that card for 10 money. That is crazy, that space. So powerful. Right, Luna's fourth and final card. She gains two advancements on each of the two most valuable company tracks. So one, two. One, two. Uh, they are the most valuable, yep. And then Luna discards the B and C research plans that match this. So it's E... So it's that one and that one. So that one and that one disappear, which I don't think is going to affect me because I'm not taking any of them. And that is it. That is Luna done. Don't think this matters. Yeah, if you make the chat subscriber only, it will help. Yeah, but um, I, I thought about that. Maybe that's something that I should do is make the chat subscriber only. Let's 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 start a discussion on Patreon and see uh, on the Slack channel. Um I I can't see the downside of that really. People just have to subscribe in order to be able to chat. But will these spam bots just subscribe? I don't know. But yeah, if that will help, I can certainly I can certainly do that. I can certainly turn on subscriber only chat. Right, Luna is done. That that is it for Luna. Luna is finished. I'm not taking any more actions. So I've got four energy and four titanium, and I need to work out what the best thing for me to do is. Let's spend the energy. So it's two plus one plus my bonus one. We're obviously going to expand yellow because that's the best for me. Um, but I only have four energy, so I'm not going to be able to make it that much more valuable. It's going to be that. And do I want to, I mean, can I reduce the value of any other company? I'm not even sure I can. I mean, if I can get three helium, great. Do I want to reduce the value of pink? Yeah, I mean, I can reduce, I can, oh no, I can't reduce the value of pink. How many have I got? Four. So that would be two, but wouldn't get me anything. That would cost me two and wouldn't get me anything. And then I could go there, which wouldn't get me anything. Maybe we do purple. No, let's not do purple, Paul. Stop being silly. Um, four energy. I thought I was going to be able to do something with this, but as it is, I don't think I can. Unless I can knock out two things with four energy, which I can't do. So all this is doing is, is going to increase the value of the company ever so slightly. Yeah, I can't see a good move. Unless we instead expand with blue. But if I expand with blue, I'm making it better. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to expand with blue or pink or purple. So, yeah, it's got to be yellow. And all I'm doing is, well, I mean, it's eight points. So we'll just we'll just go here. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters at all because I can't I can't get up to the next bracket of helium. Thank you very much, Matt, for scrolling all of those messages away. And then I've got four titanium. So what do we do with the four titanium? I could go to there. That would get me one extra share, which would be an extra six points. Uh, or I could just buy a card. I'll just buy that. 
that's surely better because that's worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so I buy that for three uh, and then I use the additional one. Doesn't matter. I'll move there just for a laugh. Right, and that's it. The game, I believe, is over. There's no point doing the whole cards thing at the end. So let's get the score pad. So I've been prepared this time. I've got the score pad. What I've not got is a pen. I'm just going to go and get the pen. Are you making scones? Oh, excellent. Can you send me one? Do where you look in. Right, we have a pen. Who thinks I've won? So, Paul versus Luna. Right, so the first thing is coins. I have 14. Have I, have I missed anything? Look at all this. This is a silly amount of money. <laughs> wow. I mean, Luna does spend money when she needs to advance up the tracks, but she didn't really do that in this game. She was close over there. So one, two, three, four, five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-eight. Right. Next, Astrogo Enterprises is worth four and Luna has one share and I have no shares. Next, Tawak Industries is worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Luna has five shares. That's 40. I have one share. It's worth eight. Why didn't I spend my four titanium on getting another share there? Because it was actually better there. Yeah, right. Here we go. Now the good one. Sky Mine Resources is worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's worth nine. And I have eight shares. So that's 72. Um, how many shares does Luna have? Luna has two shares. That's 18. Uh, Minerva, zero. Right. Gas, helium. I've got zero from my gas. Luna's got 30. OK, maybe this isn't going well. Um, research. I've got 50, 60, 72. I've got 76 points from research. Luna's got 30. OK, so I think it's going to be close. Uh, 22, 94, 170 is my final score. Uh, Luna is 32, 72, 80, 90, 150. So I think I've done the scoring right. Let me know if I've made any mistakes, but I don't think I have. I think I've done my adding up correctly. And that is 170 against 150. Very different from the practice game that I did earlier in the week where I really got the helium up to the max. Um, I can't remember what was my score. Um, from earlier on in the week, was it 185 or something like that? Um, but just as a reminder, this was on difficulty level three. There is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's actually nine difficulty levels in this game between zero and eight. And this was at difficulty level three. So I beat it on difficulty level two. I've beat it on difficulty level three. And I love customizable difficulty. So I would now probably up this to four, maybe five. Um, yeah. But that, I mean, what, what did you think? I, I thought my feelings about this game at the start of the week were I'll give the solo mode a go, but I can't see it working very well here. And whilst the interaction on here wasn't as good as it is in three or four players, the solo game's really good. I really enjoyed this. And the fact that there's customizable difficulty and the fact that there is another side of the board, which we're going to look at in a minute, and the fact that there's a campaign mode as well then yeah there's a whole lot of extra replayability in here so yeah thank you very much for watching and now as a special treat we are going to look at the other side of the board so 
yeah, a little bit of an extra few minutes at the end of the video because I've not seen the other side of the board yet and I've not read the rules on it. Uh, but since Alexander is still in the chat, who designed the other side of the board? Was that you? Was that Victor? Or was it both of you together? Um, get that out of the way. And let's have a look. So, to the side at the board. There you go. And let's have a look at the rules. So... Where is it? Further details, bonus tiles, end of the game. Maybe it's in the campaign mode. Yeah, module, belt, side of the board. Okay, so uh, what happens is you'll notice these um, stations are slightly different. So what you've got is you've got some extra pieces, some odd shaped pieces that now come with each company. So you fill the outposts on the rectangular spaces and then you put these odd shaped pieces on those spaces like that. So each of the companies will be set up the same way. Uh, they are shuttles is what they are. Um, but the positions of the stations and the company tracks are inverted. So pink is now over there instead of over here. So yellow and pink are the other way around. Um, the game is played as usual, but on this side of the board, the use all energy cards action and the use one field scientist card action are different. So when you use energy cards, which is normally what you use to expand, uh, you've got to use all of your energy cards in one company. But instead of entering sectors, you spend your energy points to enter belt spaces. So the belt spaces are these spaces here. OK, so each one is numbered. Um, there are outpost spaces on asteroids and there are shuttle spaces on flight paths. Oh, these are outpost spaces as well. So you've got asteroids and then you've got shuttle spaces. So what you do is you choose a belt that is within reach of the company you're expanding, uh, which is if it's attached to a flight path that contains a shuttle, of that company or has an outpost of that company okay so from here you go along lines so you you go here with a shuttle oh no that is a shuttle you go here and then once you put stuff on here you can then branch out to here okay i think that's how it works um it costs one two or three points to enter the belt spaces so entering a belt space consumes one energy point but if in order to reach it, you cross a flight path that has an energy printed on it, it costs an extra one. And if there's already an outpost there of another player, it consumes one to oust it. OK, so that's similar. Um, but yeah, that's slightly different. So yeah, you're, you're not just going into sectors. You're actually expanding along these flight paths. But the bonuses are similar. Uh, and the way that you oust other people is also similar. Um, what else is different? The using one field scientist is slightly different, but it it modifies how many gas collectors you've got. The rule the rules for how many gas collectors you've got are slightly different. But anyway, that's that's it. And as I mentioned, there is a campaign, and I do like a good old campaign mode. So chapter one is mining the moon, where you and I think you can play this in solo as well. Yeah, you can play the, the you can play the campaign in solo or multiplayer. Um, but the first chapter of the campaign uses the mission cards so there's, a, there's an extra set of cards that come with the game, which is the mission cards. And it explains how that works. Then in chapter two, you go into the belt and you play with the belt side of the board. So you have to learn how to play that. Chapter three is back to the moon with some slight differences. Uh, and then chapter four, lurking in the belt is, is the final one where you've got these threat cards. And that is that is it. That is the end of the, the four chapters. So, yeah, a nice little campaign if that's something that you're interested in. Let me know. Uh, I mean, right at the moment of filming this video, the game is not quite out yet. So people haven't played it. But for anybody watching this video afterwards, if you do play the campaign, please let me know what you think about it. Leave me a message in the comments and, and let me know. We are done for today. A big thank you to everybody who has kept me company today. Uh, and also a big thank you to everybody who has been able to donate to the uh, charity. Just as a reminder, the two streams today are in aid of supporting the charity. 
uh, the uh, Cots for Tots charity, which you can get to by the Just Giving page, which is linked in the description of the video, is on screen, and somebody might post it um, in the chat as well. Um, yeah, and a big thank you to all of my patron supporters for funding the channel. I know I say this a lot, and if you're not a patron supporter, you're probably fed up of me saying it, um, but literally I spent all day yesterday preparing for today, and I've taken all day today as well to create these videos, and I've not made any money out of this myself, and that is only possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign that gives me the financial flexibility to take time away from work to produce this extra comment, extra content. Um, and many of you in the chat are Patreon supporters and I can't say thank you enough because without you, I can't do what I do. And uh, a lot of what I do is very enjoyable. Yes, it took me hours to set up for this, but I really enjoy this game. This is a really, really good game. So we're all done. I'm going to go for another cup of tea and a much needed lie down. And I will speak to you all soon. I will be back next week with some more live streams. But until then, take care. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.